Welcome to DTLT today. Another episode, another time. What's up? We're starting. Hi. We're starting. How are you? Good yeah. to see you. Okay. Face out of the iPad for a second. All right. I was trying to figure out whether my chat room stuff was working. You got into the chat quick this time. Uh, I'm in. Sometimes it's half an episode or more before you ever make it. Now that I kept all the settings right, though, you're good. Yeah, see, so you... Now, i got to remember that we put Colloquy up to see that stuff, so... Yeah. You know, I'm I'm still an amateur compared to Timmy Boy, so it's, hey, I'm getting there. You can try. Well, anyway, today we have a um, very special guest, guest uh, Curtis from Mary Washington. You work in uh, university relations. Yes. Is that what they call it? Yep. Okay, at Mary Washington. I came from a place where it was public relations. But well, and I, I kept different. calling it college relations in, yeah. in one of the last episodes. So yeah. we're, we're not a college you're anymore. A we're a university. university. Right. So, but you do something pretty specific there. So you're involved with the web development, but you work a lot with WordPress, right? Yeah. That's, uh, I'm pretty much in charge. You know, at this point, I'm, I'm full-time WordPress developer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you probably know, the new website that we'll be unveiling soon is going to be completely powered by WordPress. Yeah. And so that's my job is to make sure that WordPress is going to work to do that. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So. Yeah, it's an exciting thing. I've never been involved with the university that was taking an open source piece of software like WordPress and running it as their content management system. So it's a big endeavor, I'd imagine. It is. It's extreme. It's an extremely large endeavor. Um, you know what I mean? We're, we're we're basically breaking ground in a lot of ways yeah. that, you know, I mean, there there are organizations out there that are using WordPress for larger sites, and there are one or two, you know, educational institutions that are using WordPress, but there aren't really any out there that are educational institutions that are using it on the scale that we'll be using it, at least not yet, mm -hmm. um, you know, for a university website. And then when you bring in, you know, we're, we're not just using WordPress the way most people would for blogging. Right. We're not even just using WordPress as multi-site. Mm -hmm. We actually had to put in another level on top of that multi-network, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, it's there are a couple plugins out there that do it, but that's basically all they do is just enable that feature. Right. And then my job is to make sure that all the plugins and features we're using work in a multi-network environment. Right. So. So for folks who don't know how that all works, so if you went to like WordPress.com and set up a blog of your own, that would be a single blog, an instance of WordPress, you know, your own little publishing platform. Well, then we have UMW Blogs, which is a multi-site installation. So that allows anybody from Mary Washington to go on there and say, I want to create a blog. You know, um, WordPress.com is its own multi-site installation. It allows anybody to go on there and say, I want my own blog, and it spits out an installation of WordPress for them. What Mary Washington doing is what you're saying here is one more level where you've got a network and you say, I want to create a multi-site installation and multiple multi-site installations. Right, yeah, that's basically the way we're using it. You know, and I mean, we're not, for us, you know, on, on the university website side, you know, when you sign, you know, you don't really sign up and get a site the way you do right. with UMW blogs, but it's the same concept where you've got, yeah, I mean, it's, it's still one single installation of WordPress. It's that same set of files, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the same database. But yeah, we've got it set up so that we've got each site within a multi-site network, mm -hmm. and then we've got multiple networks, and they're all working off a single installation of WordPress. So that what we're doing basically is we have, you know, we we set it up this way in one in one, you know, for one reason was to make sure that we could have sub subdomains to help split off the parts of the you know right. of the website that really should be their own kind of animal. Mm -hmm. um, and then still have subdirectory sites under that, um, you know. But it's also about permissions and everything, you know, to do with that. So that just because someone works in the provost's office doesn't mean they should have control over all content that happens on the provost site. Right. So you know, we've got a network set up for the provost, and then whatever sites fall under the provost, those are sites that will each have their own administrator. Wow. that can manage the content just for that part of, mm -hmm. of what shows up under provost.umw. So, so are, there, are there examples of other companies, if not educational institutions, that are using multi-network? <laughs> not, you know, really, I haven't found any good examples, really, of anybody using multi-network. Um, you know, and again, part of it's because it really is, it's seamless on the front end. You know, when you're visiting a website, you know, there's no real way to tell is this multi-site, is this multi-network, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, I mean, so, so it's really something somebody would have to advertise in order to know what they're doing, you know, whether they're using multi-network. 
but I know that the multi-network plugins are not that you know they're I think each one only has you know a couple thousand downloads or something like that so okay. you think of you know the millions of people using WordPress right. and there are only three plugins that do this yeah. and total there's probably only 3,000 downloads of these plugins or so mm -hmm. you know so you know that not many people are doing this. That's, did that capability come into existence with WordPress 3 or has it kind of always been possible? It's always been possible well it's it's always been possible since WordPress Mu started development. Okay. Um, the WordPress database itself, the way sites are laid out in the database, there's an option for which network you're using, you know, in the database. It's a column in the database, mm -hmm. but WordPress, the code that builds WordPress just doesn't make use of that anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so WordPress Mu, you know, they implemented the multi-site concept and Mew then that got... multi-user and then WordPress right. rolled it into their actual software. Yes, okay. yep. And then... Um, so when, when multi-site got pulled into WordPress, you know, I mean, all that capability was there. It's just a matter of there's no code that basically turns that option on. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, that's really all these plugins do is they just turn that option on for you. Um, so you can do that. And then also, obviously, they, they include domain mapping so that you can have separate domains for each network right. um, or even each site. And UMW Blogs uses domain mapping, too. That's mm -hmm. how we get, you know people with their own vanity URLs. That's on how we UMW get dtlttoday.com. There you go. So, so that's, that's running on UMW blogs, but, but you almost uh, never know it. Yeah, so the multi-network plugins are basically set up. They do domain mapping and they turn on that option and that's all they do. Okay. So then, you know, all the plugins, you know, 90, ni probably 98% of WordPress plugins aren't set up to work with multi-site in the first place. Right. And 0%, well, actually three plugins, I think, because those yeah. are the three I wrote, <laughs> are set up to work with multi-network Point zero 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 one percent yeah, exactly. All authored so, by Curtis. Yes, so. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your history. So you have some background in WordPress or in web, de web development itself. What, what did you do before you came to Mary Washington and took this on? Yeah, um, you know, WordPress was, was kind of, you know, it, it was basically kind of a hobby for me before I came to UMW. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very, you know, all-inclusive hobby. Yeah. Um, but web development, yeah, I was I was the webmaster at Lord Fairfax Community College up okay. in uh, Middletown, Virginia, before I came here. Um, I developed a content management system for their website from scratch. From scratch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. And that was basically at that time we actually we seriously looked at WordPress. But at that time, which at this point was almost five years ago, WordPress wasn't anywhere near being able to do that kind of thing at that point in time. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, by the time I left there, it was something where I was looking at WordPress and going, wow, it'd be really nice to do all this in WordPress. Mm -hmm. And then University of Mary Washington comes along and says, hey, we're looking to do our website all in WordPress. And I said, hey, perfect fit. Yeah. So It's that's... amazing to me. Yeah, I'd... I used to do web development, and uh, from the beginning, I used WordPress as a content management system because, unlike you, I couldn't I couldn't roll my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't couldn't do DIY on the right. content management. Uh, but you know, years ago, it was very difficult. You know, you had pages, and that was kind of it, and everything you had to kind of tweak to kind of make it work as a content management system. And more and more, it seems like all the new features that WordPress rolls out, the custom post types, the different things, are geared around that to say, okay, well, yeah, this is already a decent blogging platform. Let's make it a decent content management system for entire mm -hmm. websites and networks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually something that at WordCamp San Francisco, um, Matt Mullenweg, the creator of WordPress, um, you know, he, during his State of the Word speech, uh, he mentioned he was talking about and showing statistics about you know you know WordPress is the number one blogging platform you know millions and millions of people use it for blogging I think right. I think new statistics show something like one out of every three new websites that come onto the web are using WordPress yeah um, you know and things like that and so he said you know basically that's what he said was that we you know we are a blogging platform and now we need to put our focus on content management, you know, mm -hmm. and that's basically, I guess that's what they've been doing for the last year or so is really just pushing towards using WordPress as a content management system because they saw so many people already trying to do that. Yeah. They've decided to make WordPress, you know, do that from scratch. So. Now, one of the, this is something that's always kind of come up in my mind is, is the, the idea about how WordPress works and the database structure and that sort of thing. Um, 
can you offer your opinion or, or talk a little bit about you know why WordPress versus other things whether there is that overhead with with the tables and the databases and that sort of thing or um, whether it's just kind of a different beast and and it's got its, its pros and cons versus other uh, you know platforms that have their pros and cons right yeah um you know I mean it is it's one of those things where yeah I think they do they kind of all have their own pros and cons um, WordPress the database is set up in a way that is, you know, really because WordPress is still a system where even in multi-site, the the idea behind it is for them to be kind of separate animals. They're supposed to be, you know, separate sites like UMW Blogs is. Mm -hmm. They're not really supposed to integrate with each other, and so the database isn't really set up for you to be pulling, you know, this site's content into this site and that sort of thing. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's the database itself isn't designed that way. But the way they've written the code, it's fairly simple to switch to tables and, and pull things out the way you need to. Um, it's not, you know, it's it's probably not 100% ideal as far as the database design goes. But the code from WordPress really makes a difference on on how well WordPress works and how different WordPress is from other systems. Um, so I mean, the database design probably could be more, you know, more optimized for a content management system. Um, but in order to keep WordPress as flexible as it is, and in order to keep the code as flexible as it is, I think that the database design probably makes a lot of sense for WordPress. Um, you know, and then as far as other aspects of it, the, the biggest hurdle when you're talking about any content management system is just the amount of time it takes to implement the system. Um, and as you guys probably know, in WordPress, I mean, that is... They say it's a five-minute install, and they're you know they're not lying. Right. I mean, you in in five minutes you can have a website up and running with WordPress, and yeah. there's I haven't seen any other content management system that's able to do that that quickly and that effectively. Um, you know, I mean, it just it it doesn't have it, there is no learning curve because everything's so familiar in WordPress. It's extremely quick to set up and install. Well, and for um, me, the biggest pro was always just the community behind mm -hmm. it, and that's just. I mean, that's just something that has snowballed into this thing where it's like anything that I can't find that, I, you know, I wanted to do something, I always say there's got to be a plug-in for this. Mm -hmm. And there's usually 10 plugins to yep. do that specific thing in different ways and different things. So uh, that's amazing to me. And, and like you mentioned, there were things specifically with the network type stuff that you're having to actually make yourself. So you're creating plugins and then you're putting them back into the community mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah, and that's what, you know, and that was also a really cool thing that I thought, you know, when, when I came to work here, when I applied for the job, was just the idea that, that they, they you know, here at UMW, we support that community and we uh -huh. support that open source nature. And that, you know, I mean, it was that my code wasn't just going to be locked in a vault somewhere. Right. It, was, it was something we were allowed to share with the people, and that's part of why we're doing things the way we're doing them, is so that we can share them with the world and we can, you know, have that sense of community so that, yeah, I mean, all the features I'm developing, you know, I've already released, I think, six or seven plugins that are related to things I'm doing on the site. They're out there publicly in the WordPress repository. People are using them already, um, you know, and then all the other code that I'm writing is basically, you know, it, it's there. You could ask me for it. You know, I mean, it's, it's stuff that's pretty specific, specific to UMW, to yeah. so I haven't released it, you know, in the public repository, but it's not like I'm hiding it. You know, right. it's there. It's just, it's just, you know, what are you going to do with our meet the faculty? You know, <laughs> yeah, right. that's not going to do you any good. So. Yeah, and, and you're actually blogging the process of creating these plugins, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, you know, keep... I'm trying to keep a record of the plugins that I'm developing and, you know, the versions that I'm going through and the features that I'm adding, um, you know, and I'm doing that on my own website just because, you know, again, it's something where it, it's just, it, it's easier for me to control that process there. But, yeah, I, I am. I'm trying to log all the, the changes that I'm making and, and, you know, letting people know what's going on and, and you know, and, and making sure that the word gets out that these plugins are there. and. Right. You know, they're they're there for people to play with and and change and do whatever they want with them. You know, I mean, it's it's WordPress, and that's part of the beauty of WordPress is that since it's released under the GPL, you know, I mean, if if you write anything that relies, you know, that depends on WordPress, it's you know, if you want to release it to anyone, it has to be under the GPL, which means they right. can do whatever they want with it, and mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful. You know, it I mean, is. yeah. So, um, 
So when does the new website go live? When can people expect to <laughs> see all your amazing yeah. work out in the wild? Um, and give us a hard date, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. To the team. No, that one you'll have to ask somebody else about. But <laughs> it will be, I believe it's supposed to be around the middle of October. Mid-October. Um, you know, I don't know 100% sure, but I yeah. think that's around the time. So. And, it, and the website itself is getting an entire redesign. It's not just the back end that's getting changed. It's also mm -hmm. we've got a company working on the templates for the yeah. front end, too. So it'll yep. be very noticeable when it's a new website. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know it's yeah it's it's no, we're not just changing the back end, we're changing the front end, and we're not just doing a fresh coat of paint. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not one of those things. I see a lot of universities out there that will just redesign their homepage, and then you sure. click any link on the homepage, and you end up back yeah. on the one that they were using in 1995. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, and you we're school, not doing school of education who made their page and front <laughs> right. page, and yeah. You know, but we're you know we're not doing that here. Yeah. You know, it. The entire website won't necessarily move over all at once uh -huh. to the new WordPress system, but we are moving the entire website over to the WordPress system. It's just, you know, obviously some of it's going to take time to do that. And training. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, so, but we are taking, you know, the top level pages and the, you know, top level sites and things like that and, mm -hmm. and pushing them into WordPress right away. Um, you know, so when you click on a link on the home page, it's going to take you to another nice looking site that's, you know, put through WordPress. So. Now, in, in previous shows, I think we did talk about a little bit of the history of, of like where UMW blogs came from and some of the web um, manager stuff that, that mm -hmm. Mary Washington has, has had. Has there been any tricks that you've come up with to, to do the conversions? We move pre people are using contribute right now to yeah. edit their pages on umw.edu. Mm -hmm. Have there been any conversion tricks that you've learned, or is it just kind of um, been hammer and No, I mean, really what, uh, you know, and this, this, you know, Kathy pretty much, who is my boss, she, uh, you know, Kathy, Kathy Derricky, she's, she's the one who, you know, has managed and still manages the existing website. Right. Um, she, she uh, you know, she just wrote a little script. I, I helped her with some of the, you know, some of the details that needed to go into it, but she just wrote a script that would export information from, contribute into a WordPress XML file and so then they can just hit the import button so you know you log in as a web manager you press the export button and contribute you right. log into WordPress and hit the import button and it imports all the content That's amazing. Um, now one of the things that we are doing that you know again this is part of one of the plugins that I wrote um, is when if if you have an active directory account so if you have an email address at University of Mary Washington right you can log into the system once it's up and running, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so, and it'll automatically pull in if you belong to a certain, you know, distribution group and you log into a certain site, it'll, it'll automatically assign you the right permissions so that you can start, you know, working away on your site. So. Okay. That's awesome. You know, so. That's great. Well, Curtis, thanks for coming. Uh, we need to wrap up. Make sure um, we, uh, tell Curtis's There's Curtis a big blog question here. Uh, what's your blog address so people can follow? I know you're on, <laughs> on Twitter you're C. Grimla, so C-G-R-Y-M-A-L-A -A yes. on Twitter. So they yep. can follow you there for updates. But what's yeah. your blog address? Um, it is, well, the, the blog for the plugins is plugins.10, which is T-E-N, mm -hmm. hyphen, the numbers 321.com. 10-321.com. So, yep, and that's yep, your so domain. Yes. Okay. Yep. And I'll make sure to put that on my Twitter page. Yeah, and we'll put it in, we'll <laughs> put in the show <laughs> notes as well so people can so, see it. So, so. dtlttoday.com and look below today's episode. There you go. Sounds good. So, well, thanks for coming by and well, talking to us. Thank you for having this. us. Yeah. It's great. So, thank we'll you. see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.